All right, hey, uh, I'm Steve Orlando, writer of uh, comics uh, across the world. We're here today uh, kicking off something called Who's Got the Juice? Uh, a little bit of talk about different industries and spirits and sort of the lines that connect them all. Uh, why do I know anything about that? Well, 10 years uh, of wine and spirit sales before I was a comic book writer is why. And uh, when I finally uh, cut the cord and went into comics, I had learned and gained a lot from my experience, chiefly with uh, PM Spirits, a company that started its own brand that is trying to do things differently, focuses only on small producers, uh, small craftsmen, and only spirits. So from the start, doing something different, that's something that's gone into my life. I try to do different things differently in comics as well. Uh, and with that in mind, we just thought I'm trying to sit down with people uh, who are doing similar stuff in different industries because uh, life and business is more similar than you would think. Uh, first up, uh, someone who is changing the game uh, when it comes to pro wrestling, social media, content creation. Uh, let's talk to Dan Housen. Yes, this is me. Dan Housen, hello. Hi, how do you do? I'm great, man. I've got a bottle of something we're gonna drink here in a couple minutes, but uh, I wanted to talk about you a little bit first. You know, I was saying, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, everybody likes to talk about you. Uh, he loves to talk about himself. Yes. Uh, you know, I've been cutting my own path in comics for six years. Uh, you uh, have done a lot of things in wrestling that are, are a lot of firsts. You know, in the time of the pandemic right now, it's uh, some people have looked at it as uh, a huge setback, but from my perspective, you've made it into an opportunity. How the hell are you doing that? Well, Dan Housen makes uh, the best of any situation. And yes, Dan Housen has become a cockroach of sorts, surviving during the pandemic and thriving. And so what are you doing differently? You know, I see a lot of people across, I mean, my own industry uh, and I mean, what we're talking about the spirits industry when you had some some places shut down in parts of the in parts of the quarantine what have you been doing differently what sets you apart well dan Housen has taken it upon himself to climb inside of the internet and live inside of twitter and you know provide entertainment that way the only way dan Housen knows how to do when he cannot travel live so yes he lives inside the internet he's in the internet right now looking at you isn't that nice it feels a little strange, I'm not going to lie, uh, but clearly it's been working for you. Uh, you know, when it comes to uh, when, when it comes to spirits, you know, we weren't shut down for that long. Comics was shut down a little longer, but it really, I feel like it's thinned the herd in many in many cases with pro wrestling because some people without that live audience really don't know how to pivot. And I think that, in my opinion, you've sort of taken your uh, your persona uh, and you've taken down Danhausen from a ring persona into something much more. Like you said, you're living in the internet and now you are doing television shows. Now you are doing content in a whole different arena and you're sort of changing what wrestling means in my opinion. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, uh, but it's not, you, it's not just work in the ring now. Uh, you know, you've basically, you, you're working the internet. You're, 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 you're putting your, yourself in places where people have never gone before. Well, yes, this, uh, you said it has, you know, been thinning the herd. Dan Housen is a thinner of the herd. He's the leader. Dan Housen is leading the, uh, the pack of sorts with, uh, you know, the other re wonderful wrestling human beings like uh, Effie and uh, Warhorse and Alley Cat and Dan the Dad, you know, wonderful humans that are ruling the internet, if you will. Now, look, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm surprised you would take this interview because I know you have a complicated relationship with alcohol from time to time. For me... Mikey water. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, about that. I, a lot of times when I was first getting into comics, having worked in wine and spirits, it was an asset for me because it was a conversation starter. Uh, it was something that people who were already working in, in the comics and writing industry maybe didn't know so much about. So I found it as a great way to make inroads. Uh, a lot of people still sort of tag that onto my persona, even though I've sort of been out for six years. Uh, you obviously, as I said, uh, are contentious at times uh, with, with types of spirits. Like, talk to me about how that started. Like, what, what became of you uh, and, and, you know, things that are a little spicy? Is we talking about spicy ghosts? Are, are we, though? Like, you, you might have spicy clever. spirits. What did you mean? Uh, yeah, so, you know, we, 
when I was working with this company, we would push cognac, we would push tequila, we push agave. Yeah, it was all sorts of spirits. And the thing about that is, is that originally comes from the idea that when you drink these things, it raises your spirits, it alleviates. Ah, yes. Well, then, as in, you know, you drink the spicy water, and behind you, evil spirits rise up. So you sort of you've been using it to your advantage in a completely different way than to, than me as well. Right. You summon ghouls. Is that what's happened with you? I mean, like, to be fair, most of the time I see interacting with, uh, you know, things like hard seltzers, uh, but I've seen you work, I've seen you, I've seen you talk about other things, I've seen you drink other things. Are there things that are not too spicy? Like, like are there things that can please you in this realm? Or are we setting ourselves up for disaster? Well, you no, know, we'll see. One time, Dan Housen's great friend, Black Phillip, made a nice tasting cider, and that was quite evil. It was uh, made from an apple orchard of some sort. It was made uh, by a good friend, you know? It was quite nice. So Dan Housen is trusting that since you're his good friend, you will not lead Dan Housen astray with this bottle of juice or whatever. Yeah, so about that, it's funny that we're calling this uh, series of talks, Who's Got the Juice? Because what we're going to do today uh, is actually something called the Pinot de Chiron. Uh, and it's a wild thing. It's something that I didn't know about until I was doing this job. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of juice in it. There's a lot of actual juice in it. It started out... Uh, as an accident, so you got some cognac people who were uh, who accidentally had some fresh juice fall into a barrel that had a little bit of cognac left. They decided to seal it up uh, and let it sit for a longer period of time, and that's how this type of spirit came to pass. So what you got is actually something pretty rare, uh, but it is a uh, juice forward. You have a cognac that's already been made that's mixed in with fresh juice. So when we open it, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, but it is something that I didn't find out about even. It's relatively, it's relatively unknown. And that's why I'm excited to talk about it today. It's one of those products that we're putting on the market, my, uh, that Nicholas, uh, my friend is putting on the market, uh, and raising awareness of it. So are there things, you know, I would argue that you are, as I said, you're changing the game, but you're also doing it by going back to real character. Uh, is there stuff that you're doing you think is actually a throwback to the past that is sort of fresh again, uh, or is it all new? Well, you know, Dan Housen uh, has been doing everything uh, Dan Housen has ever done. He's 100% original. Dan Housen is uh, not a throwback. Dan Housen is number one. Much like this juice. See? See what Dan Housen did there? I would never argue with anything you did. Uh, so the thing about this, uh, before we get into it, it was, um, you know, PM Spirits, uh, not everyone knows what it stands for. It's named for Paul Marie. Paul Marie is my friend Nicholas's father. Uh, and I think it's nice promoting that legacy, uh, you know, the things you learned from your family in the past, pushing it forward, making it a big part of your product, a big part of your brand. Uh, you don't talk a lot about your family. Uh, you know, what is, uh, wh where does your brand, where does Dan Housen come from? Well, funny you should mention, Dan Housen has uh, mom housing, dad housing, sister housing. And yes, uh, Dad Housen, actually, he is uh, one with the spirits. He hunts them, much like a ghostbuster. He goes town to town hunting spirits. And uh, yes, uh, he showed Dan Housen many of the film that uh, influenced Dan Housen. Oh, the old horror film. So you would say, in a lot of ways, you're kind of like this bottle. Like, you're putting stuff you learned from your father forward, and you taste delicious. Yes, this is precise. Spicy boy Dan Housen. I mean, I've been called that as well a couple times by guys in the past. Um, so, you know, the thing about it is like you, as I said, like you've had spirits that your friends have made that you like. You've had spirits that really get a strong reaction out of you. Uh, I've seen you drinking White Claw with Alley Cat and that never ends well. Um, but do you think, you know, just as I said, like it was a conversation starter when I was trying to get my foot in the door, when you're when you're in the ring, when you're working, like, is there, what sort of role does it play in your life? Other than, you know, hatred when it comes to certain types of spicy water. One time, a fellow spit spicy water in Dan Housen's eyeballs, and he was blinded, and then he lost the match. It was not nice. So that's the role it plays in Dan Housen's wrestling life, is that it causes Dan Housen to lose, which is not good. So it's sort of your kryptonite. It is kryptonite, yes. All right, well, no, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Um, you know, so what I think we should do is we should probably taste this thing. Yes, let us try. But first, I mean, mine's already open, but I will certainly let you try to open it. Let's see. Then how's it? Much like an evil candle, yes? 
All right. Yes. All right. Ah, it didn't do anything. It did not make a loud noise like Danhausen was anticipating. It's not a loud noise type of thing. Uh, so. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get a bottle or a glass as well. So we'll taste it and you can tell me what you think about it. Uh, but as I said, the cool thing about Pinot de Chiron, I lo when I was selling it, I loved it. I still love it now. It's not too high alcohol. It's not too spicy. Uh, and it's the thing you can make cocktails with if that's the thing you like. I mean, do you like a cocktail? Yes, they taste quite nice. They taste like fruit and candy. Dan has eats one that tastes like sugar all the time. <laughs> Which one is that? Fun dip. You know, I got to say, I don't know the recipe to that. I, I would love to know your recipe for that cocktail. Uh, probably the Rocks tequila or something, and then you pour a fun dip in it. Who knows? I mean, it sounds great. We're going to do something a little different here, a little more classical when it comes to Pinot de Chiron, but I'm putting it on the list, man. Uh, so we can taste it. This is the Paul Marie A. Fee Pinot de Chiron. It's not spicy? I will have to find out. Uh, okay, we'll see. I'm going to let you drink first. has a bit of a spice. And yes, it tastes uh, quite nice. A fruitful little uh, hint, if you will. Tastes like grapes mixed with raspberries. All right, let me see what I think. I mean, you're, you're pretty, you've already incepted me when it comes to those things. So maybe I did this in the wrong order, but I'm going to taste it myself. We shall see. I do also think a little bit of spice. No, I think you're totally right. So when I drink this, uh, you know, it has a nice viscosity. It's definitely a little bit, I mean, it's sweet, but it has a honeyed flavor that uh, comes out uh, mostly from, you know, from your, from your time in the barrel. And I, what's cool to it, to me about it is that it's, it has that sweetness, but it's not overbearing. It's not, you know, perhaps it's like not, a bunch of cocktail. It's not uh, too spicy. It's not too spicy and it has some nice acidity to match uh, the sweetness, you know, from, from the business side of things, that's what I always like. The people tend to think sweet wines can be uh, overbearing or too much, uh, you know, too sweet versus too spicy. But the thing is, is that you can have something really sweet if it's got something, if it's, if it's got acidity to match it. Um, so, you know, I would say people often get the wrong idea about sweet wines, and this is something that can change their minds. I'm sure you met a lot of people. You live in the Internet, a place that's full of opinions. Uh, do people have, I know, uh, do people have, uh, I'm sorry to startle you there, uh, oftentimes, since you live on the internet, the wrong opinion about you, like they often would about sweet wines? No, everybody loves that, Dan Housen, as everybody should love those sweet wines. Sweet, sweet wines. Yes, yeah. Dan Housen believes this is nice. This is quite nice. I like your glass you're using. I, I like your glass you're using for it too. It's not a traditional glass for Pinot de Chiron or dessert wine, but I'm a fan of it. Yes, it's a black glass. I mean, it works. It works, and it fits your it fits your personality. You know, mine uh, being open and generic. Uh, something nah. I've been called, something I've been called by many. Uh, Who said that? Send Dan in their address. Well, I mean, it's quarantine, so you'll have to you'll have to wait, but. I appreciate, an angry inbox. I appreciate that. Uh, so we, we tasted it, you know, talk to me, you know, I've got my ideas about what I would do with this. Yes, I'd serve it after dinner, uh, chilled. I'd serve it perhaps in a light cocktail. Um, I also might sub it in where you would have something like triple sack. You know, you obviously uh, do things very differently for me in your life. You know, what, what would you do with this? I mean, do you eat dinner, first of all, if you do? Uh, <laughs> I mean, what's your average, you know, where, where could this fit in? You get a nice bowl of teeth, you pair it up with this uh, wonderful wine, very nice, very evil wine, and yes, you, and then you wash it down, you know? That's, a, yeah, that's fair. I've never really asked where you get all those teeth. You know, I've seen you live a couple times. You are a great personality in the ring. Uh, and actually, it just came into my mind, you do have a previous association with tequila, not the one that many people expect. Like, uh, where, you know... First of all, talk to me. Uh, talk to me about you and tequila. Uh, you know, for for people who don't know you, it's it's one of your signatures. Um, yes. When did that all start? Ah, then I was in the summer of nineteen forty-three. It would be probably who knows. 
Uh, Danhausen was uh, having to wrestle this tall fellow in a bar. He was much taller than Danhausen, eight feet tall, if you will. Danhausen's about seven. So Danhausen had to dance on the bar, and he thought, what better way to be able to reach this man in his tall head and kick him than to follow iconic uh, human, yes, celebrity human of sorts, uh, Pee Wee Harmonhausen. He does the dance where he dances around the bar to the song Tequila and kicks bikers in the face. Yes, that'll do. Now, the funny thing is about that, like Pee Wee Herman is a real person and that sound, uh, that you know, the, the soundtrack you took that from is copyrighted. And, you know, we deal with that oftentimes. We've had to change the name. You know, you, everything, you know, in business is, is overly complicated. By the time you get a name for a product, five people have signed up for it already. Uh, have you had run-ins with Pee Wee Herman because of that? Because you're using no. it all, you probably made it more famous than he has. No, you're the most famous uh, fellow on earth. Danhausen believes. Now, Danhausen has not had any interaction with Pee Wee Housen, but a fan Housen did make one of those little Pee Wee dolls into a Danhausen. It seems like an easy custom. Uh, the uh, confession of mine, I used to make custom figures like that when I was younger too. So, I mean, it's, a, it's something I have a lot of respect for. I actually had someone give me little like Cupid dolls of Midnight or Apollo at one See, point. that's quite wonderful. Yeah, they're pretty horrifying. Um, and their mouths are really strange, but you know, like it was nice, the thought was nice. A wonderful fan art, yes? No, absolutely. I think, I mean, they had come, I think, to New York all the way from, from Germany to give me these dolls, which, you know, no one's ever driven across the mountain Incredible. with all before, so. Some lovely characters you have uh, written? Yes, I've written them. Uh, they've become pretty associated with me, but you know, the nice thing about that is I really enjoy working on them and they let me be vulgar and- Quite nice, because here. those are characters from the 90s, and you have made them your own. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like most people say, I'm trying to bring back the 90s. Everyone who reads my work says I'm just trying to make it 1997. So you're not far from the truth. Seems quite nice to Dan Housen, like a good plan. Yeah, I mean, 97, I was 12. It would be a, good, a, nice, a nice time just forming my own human thoughts. Uh, but it would be nice to go back there, perhaps. Um, but, you know... I'm gonna drink this again uh, because I just wanna, I, you know, I can't waste this in the glass. So it is funny, uh, we, the whole idea of talking to people about this is, you know, we, we tend to think that businesses are a lot different, but I really think that most things are a personality business. And I think they're very similar. The, you know, one of the reasons that I'm speaking out to almost no one who works in the spirits industry is like, you know, we're, we're all basically selling a narrative. Uh, you know, we have a product in comics when I'm pitching a book, like, yes, I'm pitching a comic, but I'm selling an idea, uh, at, at its core. And when I was selling spirits, when you are showing up, yes, it's what's in the bottle, but it's also the story behind the bottle. So, uh, that all being said, you've tasted this. You don't know much more other than that it was named after my friend Nicholas's father. Uh, so what type of story would you, when you're walking in, how do you sell this? So, you know, if you're talking uh, you know, to, to another wrestler, like, how do you, now that you tasted it, put it forward, get someone to try it as well, especially if they're not sure. Yes, well, so Dan Housen personally would say, hello, fellow human, would you like to try some spicy water that is not too spicy and not too bitter? Then you should try this. Paul Marie Housen wine. Yes, very good. Uh, it has a very nice, very evil, fruity taste. Uh, that is not too hard on the tongue, you know? And for someone who does not uh, partake in the spicy waters too often, this is an easy in. I think that's a great idea. And it's honestly how I would sell it a lot back when I was doing this job. So I, I think you're on point. You are uh, you, you're natural for these types of things. Um, you know, with us, we're trying to figure out where do we go next? Uh, you know, everything is changing. Uh, the pandemic is changing how comics work. It's changing how the spirits and importing and distribution works. Uh, if you, I mean, there is no basically indoor dining a lot of places. Uh, so what's next has got to be on your mind too, because yeah. your, your chosen profession besides collecting teeth uh, is one that involves fans and it's one that involves uh, you know, arenas uh, and, and, and around people, hitting people in the face from time to time. So, um, 
how are you solving what's next? You know, we're all innovators here. I'm doing it in comics. We're doing it with PM uh, in Spirits. Like, what's next is a big question. And I'm interested to see how you're going to solve it. Well, Dan Housen, I'll probably just continue for as long as you must, uh, providing online internet content, living inside of it, and trying to entertain the fans that way, and perhaps doing a show here or there if it is provided safe enough. Perhaps Dan Housen will invent an extending punch gun so he can stay far away and hit his opponents. I mean, that's like one part Jack Nicholson in Batman 89. Uh, oh. and and one part Dalston. Uh, perhaps Dan Housen can wrestle inside of a bubble. No one could pin him. Like the Flaming Lips? That's true, actually. E, Dan Housen will buy a purchase a bubble, and that's what he'll do from now on. And I mean, that's a fair point. No one could reach you. I mean, wh when you can get back, like, you know, one of the things that I do miss from Selling Spirits is the person-to-person -person interaction, you know? Yeah. Because it's like... you. Especially uh, when you are crafting new cocktails and working with accounts and like doing stuff that is teamwork based. Uh, you know, you're helping people, uh, you're selling your product to people and also helping them sell it to customers. Uh, I can't, I mean, I, I miss that. I miss creating new drinks to go with food and, and, and things like that. I miss Comic Cons as well, like on the writing yeah. side. What are you most excited for, uh, perhaps besides teeth collecting, for when hypothetically this stuff is over and we can get back to business? Dan Housen enjoyed interacting with the Fanhausens as well. He enjoyed meeting all of them and thanking them for coming to see Dan Housen. Lots of times they would bring him art of Dan Housen, which was very much appreciated. Uh, yes, in traveling to new places that Dan Housen did not get to go to, such as the, uh, Dan Housen was supposed to debut on the West Coast before this all happened for the first time. And hopefully when this is over, we can get back to that. And Dan Housen can take over the world, presumably. I mean, it's probably going to be a long process, but uh, you know, after spending the time I did with PM, they're, they're trying to do the same thing. Uh, of course, just the spirits world, not the spirit world. Uh, but it's going to be a challenge, uh, I think. You know, it's going to be a slow return to normalcy. And so what I think is really interesting is that both I mean, I'm constantly trying new things with comics, uh, and you are constantly trying new things. And the funny, I think you'd be right to say, like, if we talk in a week, talk in a month, what's next? The answer might change because the world day day to day the answer changes. You know, and and then and that's true for spirits as well. You know, you and you see you see restaurants and bars innovating in a way that is very exciting. Uh, and you see people innovating to meet those needs, you know, to find new ways to get them products. And that's really why I think I wanted to talk to you first, because you've taken, in a genius way, you've taken a medium that, yeah, it's person to person. You know, it's so much is about the live aspect, and you've overcome such a huge hurdle uh, by having that taken away and, and, and solving it. You know, like I, every time I see you on social media, your influence is growing and growing, um, probably much to your happiness. Uh, but it's impressive. It's impressive because it's what we all have to do. Um, you know, if you keep doing things the old way, I see this in comics. You, know, you, can, you, can, you can ride that like Dr. Strangelove uh, right into the past. Uh, or you can, you know, get off that bomb and find something new to do. So it's exciting to me to see you. It's exciting to me to talk to you. Uh, and, and, and hopefully, you know, there are things that we can learn from this interaction uh, that I can take into comics and that my friends can take into, into you know, spirits importing and spirits distribution. Uh, obviously, it's not all easy, okay? No. Like, and and I, I'm sure there's been stumbling blocks along the way. I'd be interested to hear, uh, because it was such a dramatic shift to what, from what wrestling was to what it is now, what were the mistakes? You know, what, what did you get wrong? What did you learn? It's been, I mean, it feels like seven years, but it's only been seven months. Uh, but what can we learn from you, both me and comics, my friends who are importing, uh, and the people watching? Because everybody has to innovate. I know almost no one's job is the same. So where did Dan Housen go wrong? Where did you go right? Uh, what can we learn from, from you for the past seven months? Well... Dan Housen thinks that we all need to adapt and grow given current circumstances and take risks to try to find new audiences and branch out to not only a, a comic audience or a wrestling audience or a spirit audience, but to people who do not normally like these things, we must draw them in. 
You know, I think you're really right. And when I talk, when I pitch your character to my friends, it's oftentimes people, uh, and I shouldn't even call it a character. When I pitch you to my friends, uh, it's, it's, it's oftentimes people who are not wrestling fans per se. Uh, but you know, you, you have broken through with, with your, with your entrances, with your content. Uh, and, and I think it's, it, it is really inspiring because I've seen it in, in my own industry as well. People just like, essentially throwing their hands up and saying, well, you know, the thing we've been doing for the past 40 years is, is, is not possible. So clearly this thing is not possible. Uh, but, way. <laughs> but it is possible. Uh, you know, we're here talking about it. So I think that, yes, we have to keep innovating. Uh, we have to keep, uh, you know, and, and accept that not everything is going to work. You know, yeah. that, I mean, that's what's really interesting to me. Like, I, I, I don't mean to hit you too hard or back into a corner, uh, although there's, you know, you're on a couch. But like, the, you're, when you follow your, you on social media, it seems like you, you haven't made a single mistake. Uh, like, and have, the, ha, you know, and so have there been things where you're kind of like, oh, like, I'm going to try this for a pandemic, Dan Housen, and it didn't work out? Or has it just been like, have you just been like hitting the home runs or whatever sport you prefer? Some things that uh, Dan Housen does do better than others, but Dan Housen just tries whatever he feels like doing at the time. Dan Housen must always be authentic and genuine, and if it makes Dan Housen entertained, he will put it on the internet. So really, and, and that's actually a perfect way to bring it around uh, towards like our final bit of this discussion. So even though you have uh, this business, and you are a business, uh, as am I, uh, as is as are my friends at PM, even though you are reaching however many followers you have on social media, however many fans you have, ultimately uh, the arbiter of the content you do is you. Is yes. And Dinner is entertaining himself. Thus, if it entertains the fan housings, then that's great. And I think that, <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have known that because there was no sort of lead into this interview, but you really have sort of set up the perfect pitch for why I loved working with PM, uh, why I love doing comics now. Uh, yeah, I've known Nicholas for a long, long time. Uh, and even though this is a big company that is, that is, that is importing spirits from all over the world, uh, telling the stories of people uh, who would never have their stories told in America, uh, just because, you know, maybe they only make, you know, you know 100 cases, you know, 50 cases of something. Uh, even though it, it has all that reach, ultimately, the arbiter of, of what comes into the country and what gets put in a bottle, the arbiter of that message uh, is PM. And, and they're ultimately doing it for, them, I mean, not, uh, for themselves. Uh, if it's something that tastes good to them, then they can push that story forward. But what you're really getting at to me is the concept of authenticity. Yes, you cannot sell, for example, Dan Housen cannot sell himself if he does not believe in himself. They cannot sell their spirits if they do not believe in their spirits that are, they're actually good. You cannot sell comics if you think they're bad. I mean, and God knows I've tried, but people see right through me. So, um, no, I th and, and I think that that's a, a perfect way, you know, to say, like, we're tasting spirits today, uh, and I think that we're going to end uh, with, with with a final sip before we wrap up. But you know, we're tasting spirits today, and the idea. I never set out with these conversations to have sort of an agenda, but as we talked, the onus became about authenticity, which I yes. think is fascinating because we're all you know we're people who are. Every day, I mean, I don't know what it's like for you, but I wake up every day and it's like a new thing. I think I have things figured out and something else has blown up. Something I thought was reliable is, is, is just out the door. And it's like, okay, how am I gonna do comics today in a new way? Um, and yeah, everybody has an opinion, but uh, we're all people who are ultimately being loyal to ourselves, what we like, uh, and, and that allows us to go forward and, and sell that narrative, whether it's something in this bottle, uh, whether it's the latest story you want to tell, whether it's the latest story I want to tell, authenticity is, is really the key there. Without it, you know, and I want to have you talk a little bit about this because uh, I'm just, it's, it's almost like I planned this. Uh, without it, I think everybody sees right through you. And in wrestling, everybody says you really want to be a version of yourself. Uh, it, it's maybe louder, it's maybe more exaggerated, uh, but that also is talking about authenticity. So I feel like uh, it's really the key to all three of our businesses. 
Uh, and, and, you know, like there are pitfalls there, but it's fascinating for me to have us get there without planning it. Uh, that said, authenticity in wrestling, what does it mean for you at, at its core when you're in the ring and you're out of the ring, you're being Danhausen? Uh, what happens, you know, uh, when you meet uh, folks that are maybe are not there yet? You know, because uh, there you have competition. We all have competition. I have competition. And authenticity can be a great sword to cut through the bullshit. Um, but talk to me, like, how do you help people? I'm sure, you, I'm sure you have some people who are not your enemies. You found your character and you're crushing it. I know who I am. Uh, PM is crushing it. They're selling exactly the type of spirits they want. Uh, we talked about what's next, but someone wants to find their authenticity. How do they do that? How, how do you get them there? Well, you must fail. Then I believe that you must fail first. And maybe fail again, and again, and again, and again. But this is what comes with taking the risk. You must fail until you decide that you are comfortable enough to just be yourself and express yourself as yourself in front of a live audience or a writing audience or a spirit audience of sorts. You must just go and try and try and try and try until you get it right. So if that's the case, you know, if you look far enough online on the internet where you live, like there are pictures of you with a human skin colored face. Now, when that happened, were you basically like the Jack Nicholson in the 1989 Batman movie? Were you all that time? Crime Lord? No. <laughs> Dan Housen was no crime lord. Were you putting on flesh colored makeup this whole time or how did you get yes, to work? That's exactly time? what Dan Housen was doing. I yeah. thought so. Put uh, flesh-colored makeup on and, you know, disguise himself as, which, well, Danhausen is a regular human. What are you talking about, actually? I guess you're right. I really misspoke there. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> um, but hey, man, look, I am overjoyed to have you be our first interview. And I think, you know, it's, 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 it's the type of thing that I want out of this series. It's not overly scripted. We got, though, naturally, because of who you are and who I am, to a great place. Uh, where we have our core. Uh, all these businesses, especially now, uh, in a time of, of where we're, we're stuck in, we don't have the face-to-face -face connections we maybe used to have. It's all about authenticity. Every day you're waking up there and you're selling something you really believe in. Uh, so am I. Uh, and, and from the time I've known Nicholas, that's what's going on at PM. I think that's why you get something in this bottle that, yeah, it's not like anything else, I think you would say. Uh, yes. Had you, had you tried something uh, similar to it uh, before this interview? No, Dan Housen, this is the first time he's tried something that tastes like this. That's, I mean, and, and we like that, especially when it tastes good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but uh, and, but the, the key there is, like, we're all getting there. We're all pushing forward in this time, and it's because of authenticity. And I, I, I couldn't have gotten there on my own, probably. I did that with your help. So, I mean, I assume I owe you some sort of royalty for that. Million dollars. Uh, uh, I will start paying it off as soon as I can. Um, no but, checks. Uh, I mean, I guess wire transfer, because you know, you are, are you even in America right now? Like, do you reveal where you live? Dan Housen is in Canada of some sort right now, somewhere in Canada. You're probably, I mean, I'm sure I can get you a small royalty payment very soon. Um, but that said, like, I wanna, I wanna bring it around. Uh, you, you've tasted the spirit, you've talked to me, you've listened to me ramble. Uh, when this goes up, you're going to be talking to a whole new audience of people who maybe really, again, have a lot of preconceived notions about your industry. They certainly have some about mine. Um, and this is your chance. You know, people are going to see this that have maybe not checked in on what you do uh, in, in maybe ever, uh, if not for a long time. So, so what do you want them to know as we wrap up? And then we'll put a pin in this. Well, they see. Dan Housen perhaps can get his own bottle of wine. Dan Housen and Spirits, Spirit Housens. That would be quite nice. Dan Housen will grow in the spirit community. And yes, uh, Dan Housen puts uh, all of his content on Twitter at uh, Dan Housen AD. And Dan Housen is on the Instagram too as well. And he has his own Patreon page where he uh, actually reviews things often. So this is a little bit of that. Uh, where it is patreon.com slash love that Dan Housen. You get a cooking show, an uh, interview show where we're going to have you on very soon. And yes, more reviews. It's quite nice. And I think it's safe to say for people who haven't probably watched what you do since the mid 80s or early 90s, uh, it's not the Attitude Era, right? It's totally yeah. different. I would say, in my opinion, different types of stories, different types of folks are more welcome than ever before. Is that wrong for me to say? Not wrong. There's more an inclusive uh, community now. 
We're still working on it though, but it is, it is getting there. The point is that we are making steps every day. Absolutely. And I've seen it and, and it's made me really proud to be someone who has been a fan uh, and a supporter for a long time. Uh, so with that, hey, Dan Housen, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I know you have a busy schedule. Uh, I mean, we all do right now of, of staying at home and, and, and talking about things, but I couldn't be more excited for you to be our first guest. So, and, Dan Housen, thanks to you for inviting him on this show and becoming the first guest of this. It was quite nice. Dan Housen enjoyed himself. Thank you so much, man. Uh, so we're going to tie it off. Thank you for uh, stopping in, talking to me, talking to Dan Housen. First episode of Who's Got the Juice. I'm Steve Orlando. Dan Housen, thank you very much, folks. Love that, Dan Housen. Good night.